Welcome back, fellow armchair generals. This is Gamer1745 here with my continuing playthrough of Hearts of Iron 4 with the Road to 56 mod. And I am looking at um, some of the um, national characters for um, Road to 56 here. And it says total equality, daily political power costs, for this is legal status of women if you didn't read the screen um daily political power cost plus 0.05 percent okay eating up that recruitable population increased by 20 percent consumer goods up 10 percent don't know why don't know why women having having complete equality would mean nece necessary more consumer goods don't know why there may be some reason I, w I would like to hear their their views on that but why would you presume that a fascist state would not support total equality for women why would you not do that what evidence do you have because traditional roles, you know, if you're a traditional um, traditionalist government, shall we say, you know, because we have over here um, states mandate divine inspiration. And if you're looking and that, um, I would agree that communism and divine inspiration are not a compatible um combination so if you were going to divine inspiration and whether you're looking at which at least in most cases we would see it as a traditional thing if you're looking at sort of as an islamic state in the sort of well then too but modern sense or if you're looking at you know wanting a um a strong traditionalist monarchy um rulership uh situation i can definitely see that limiting the roles of women but why in the fascist state would you not have would would total equality not be compatible there especially as you think about it um some and a significant number of um britain's um Always when I'm looking for the right word, it's suffragette movement. That's right. And I there is a movie that I have not seen. It's relatively recent on the British suffragettes and their movement. And I want to check that out and see what they they talk about that. But some of the main players, women, of the main players of the British suffragette movement who had recently gotten um, relatively um, voting rights for women were super strong diehard supporters of Mosley's British Union of Fascists. They were middle class, all these group of women. Uh, they very much supported, you know, total equality. What, what does total equality mean? Um, That can be interpreted in different ways, of course, but, you know, do you have to, to total equality mean drafting women equally to drafting men? Well, into the combat forces, as opposed to just into society's manpower movement. Well, no nation at this time, no culture or group wants to equally draft women into combat roles as men. Now, of course, in the Soviet Union, we have a few, and it's a very small handful, and they're not drafted, a few fighter pilot units that are female-based, sort of famous. And we're not talking about partisans, because partisans are a desperation move. But we definitely see women snipers and similar sorts of things in the Soviet Union. But at least mostly in my, my understanding, mostly by the Great Patriotic War or, you know, dealing with the war with um, 
the Nazis, there weren't a lot of all-women units in the Soviet Union. During the Russian Revolution slash Civil War, um, and maybe even under the Tsars briefly, uh, there were a few sort of almost women's death units or something, however you want to call them, um, going on. So there was definitely that. But if you look at um, drafting of women, you know, things, what is, there's the reality of fascism and the ideology of fascism. Um, very rarely. And I'm, um, we really don't see fascists truly in, in charge in any of these countries. Um, uh, hello, IKB, and hello, Prusano. Yes, and um, we can see what are sort of auxiliaries are not official. You get the famous Florence Nightingale of women serving in the Crimea as a sort of a volunteer unit. She was pushing it onto the British establishment. They did not want it. So yeah, it goes back to that. But you see definitely, you know, like I say, there's no, because you look at, well, Mussolini, isn't he in total charge? Well, there is the king. And Mussolini is fired by the fascist Grand Council. Yeah, that's that. But there's still the king in there. They never get rid of the king. So Mussolini is never fully in charge of Italy. He is definitely, during parts of his reign, um, the... Hey, Tippett. Good to see you. Very good to see you. And so... Uh, he's definitely the most powerful person, uh, individual in, in Italy, and the fascist movement is very strong, but he never fully comes to power. And the Italian Social Republic, well, that's just a puppet state of Nazi Germany. You see the arrow cross in um, Hungary there. Are they really ever really in power? They're sort of trying to trying to be in power under, but as uh, yeah, but that's mostly with Horthy's government collapsing. The oh, another iron iron the iron guard in Romania. I don't really think they ever fully get rid of the king there. So we're never really seeing um, fascism completely in charge. That's if you, you can um, post it. It's appreciated. So you have... Yes, Tippet needs to be beautiful. Um, so you have definitely, you know, in in national Spain, the fascists are a major factor, but are never in charge. So I can't think of a true, completely in charge, completely running fascist government ever. I know the left would think all kinds of governments have been fascist, but I mean truly an ideological fascist government. And a true ideological fascist government wants to totally mobilize all sectors of society and within the cultural society norms they will want to mobilize women oh and please note i'm always here been using the term fascist not which i do know that they're calling hitler a fascist he was not um National Socialism is different, but similar in ways. So you always, so they want to mobilize women to be part of society. And 
unlike today's modern, um, and I'm going to say something that people won't like, unlike today's modern ideology, women are not the same as men, okay? They're just not. And they, they understood that then. So body strength is a thing. And yes, there are women that are stronger than me. They're, you know, women bodybuilders, and they often take a lot of steroids and whatnot. But yeah, there are women that are stronger than me. But those are ever so few. And um, both in overall numbers and as a percentage of the population. So you can definitely put, say, women to work on the farm and which we can see in a non-fascist situation, like the Women's Land Army um, in Britain during World War II, they had a tree service. And there was um, very much a women's unit. And I think at some point it becomes primarily a women's unit of cutting down trees, of first going out and identifying what trees would make good use of for... Um, various needs, long straight trees to, you know, get the proper lumber out of, go through and mark them. And then they would fell the trees. They would cut them down in a proper manner. Now, and um, trim off all the, you know, use the axes um, to trim off all the extra branches, saws, cut it down, and then haul them out of the forest because they weren't clear cutting the forest. And they definitely used a lot more women power per weight of the trees, however that is, then you would use manpower for it. So let's say eight men would move the tree. They're using 12 or 16 or whatever women to move the same weight of tree. Yes, women's bodybuilders exist, and this is, you know, um, not everyone is equal even with, you know, that. And so there are women that are stronger. And of course, I'm I'm not going to, I'm, I'm not over average strength of men. I've definitely, some of my work experience have definitely put me around, not so much bodybuilders, but power lifters guys. And those are like a, a whole hell of a lot stronger than me. And compared to them, I'm a weakling, um, you know, guys who can lift a hell of a lot of weight. Um, so yeah, I'm nowhere near that kind of thing. So don't really picture me as, as something like that. So, but and you definitely have guys that are um, well below the average um, strength of a man, you know, normally. And sometimes there's medical things and sometimes it's just genetics, whatever. And so that, yeah, there's variances in all of this. Uh, well, the 20th century women at war over to that's interesting tippet i don't know because i'm a very near one of the main ingest intake sources for twitch so it happens yeah and that, you're absolutely right, um, Persano. And that is sort of gets to um, National Socialism's reluctance to use women more so, and sort of why I've been focusing on fascists, even though it does here include in the game mechanics women. Um, particularly Hitler and some of the upper rank, upper ranks of National Socialism really wanted women to produce babies. Not that they didn't think women were capable human beings. They really wanted them to focus on uh, population growth. But so women were, um, and that the Women's Land Army and a lot of, basically all at, of a certain age, all women, and I think it was earlier in Ger in Britain than it was in Germany, actually, um, women were drafted into um, service. If you were of a certain age and 
definitely easier to get out of it if you had children in Germany, even, even through to the end of the war, than it was in Britain, because in Britain they presumed um, if you weren't, you know, immediately pregnant or immediately after pregnancy, um, you had some extended family members that could take care of, you know, older women or whatever, or older men, but could take care of the babies. Women were, uh, of a dra drafted age were all forced to work for the war effort in Britain as a draft situation. Now, if you already had a protected job working in the armaments industry or some other protected job, hey, that's fine. You, you're, 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 you're making bombs? Great on you. Keep making bombs. But if you weren't doing a war work type job, you were drafted, you had to come into the... Um, uh, what is it? The ATS, the Auxiliary, uh, Auxiliary Territorial Service, if I have that correctly, or the Women's Land Army, or because the ATS are the women that um, flew, not combat fighters, but did um, air ferrying service. And a few of them were sort of in combat, though, generally with unarmed um, aircraft and trying to get the hell out of the combat. Um, you know, when there were German raids and they were already flying air service, air um, fairing service in Britain. So basically, at some point, all women had to be in a war related effort. And if they weren't already, you know, some of it could be working on the farm. You know, if they were part of a family farm that was producing good stuff. Yeah, keep working on that farm. But they didn't want relatively young girls or young women, I should say. Uh, working in a, as a shopkeeper. They wanted them doing something for the war effort. So Britain definitely has um, earlier more enforced uh, women's roles in the war effort, and it goes universal. Germany does a similar thing, but if you have children, you could be excused from it. Um, you don't have to be married. Married was not a, uh, it, was, it was more of a children situation. If you had children, you're already doing your part. If you don't have children, you're not doing your part. So eventually um, they were pushing more and more to that. So with my knowledge, uh, I'm trying to think, I don't specifically know about women and fascist Italy, but I know about women and the fascists in Britain were, like I say, those of you who weren't here at the start of this, um, some of the main suffragettes and sort of shocking to a lot of people, and I wonder how much that's being buried, um, moved to be um, supporters of Mosley. And in National Socialist Germany, women's roles in some of the professions did retreat from when, during the Weimar Republic era, they did they were lessened under Nazi Germany, but again, I really don't think it's because they thought women were less like capable of doing things, and we're not talking about so much physically capable, but just generally capable. Is they wanted to really focus on birth rates and that type of thing. But you have um, like Hannah Reich, the test pilot. Um, oh, and I'm forgetting her name. The the woman in charge of the um, Oh, the, oh boy, uh, FS or whatever, the, 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 the women's service, sort of a nasty woman. Um, and so you had a few, and I don't mean as of wives, but a few very high-ranking and very notable um, in women's roles in Germany under National Socialism. You have that. So women and equality. Uh, to, Well, yeah, 1060, I believe, and have no trouble watching the YouTube at that quality. Like War Thunder and other tabs. Well, if you are playing War Thunder, that will take up some of your bandwidth. Um, that's for sure. And you can drop down in quality um, artificially to maybe increase the um, the settings. I don't know if that's the issue, but um, that could be a thing to help out. Um, not on that topic. I know more of you would like me to be on YouTube, but I just can't be a single platform um, 
thing the way it's going I have to do more platforms so I know this is a long sort of monologue with a little input from you guys on women's roles in fascism was generally significant so total equality don't know what they mean but I would not keep that from a fascist government here but um hmm, what would be our best limited rights now I don't know why enforced patriarchy recruitable population which I don't want to reduce more than we already are so traditional roles daily I guess we're gonna do that which will reduce our um, needs for civilian factories okay justification for war lessons of history mm. brinksmanship global order ideological struggle I think we're going to leave this off for the moment and we're going to come back over here which is sort of what I was I normally like to do two military, two army, and one air. Um, interception attacks. That looks really good. Now, again, the way I, when I sort of built this, and I know I, well, things about my version. Um, I definitely go went back to sl uh, slots for each um, service, but okay, interception tactics that'll be useful, and yeah, I think our attacks will be good enough. But I think recovery rate will be the thing, and because we've now have that, we can do do more. Okay, so we are building or have built and are building more radars let's move a little bit more forward and covered okay that will be helpful do global order well yeah, the problem with global order is um, the tension limit for doing lend lease and sending volunteers reduces down. So presumably, if we do that, the sooner we do that, the um, oh no, wait a minute. Did, well, I don't know if I do global order. Is that my lend lease limit, or is that for the allies I don't know I don't know there's not a good enough explanation build more radar in East Prussia yeah maybe eventually we'll see about that first I want to look out into the ocean and I want to look out over France those are the the big ones there okay well let's let the clock roll We're not paid licenses. Oh, swell. Okay, well, small arms firepower. Yeah, I'll do what Arno says. Sort of good to get that done. Now, research slots. Um, hmm. Okay, well, whatever.
The Anglo-Irish trade war ends. Do people want to hear me go on another diatribe about trade wars or not? IKB says, go on then. That's probably enough of a prompting. Okay. Trade wars. There was a lot of trade wars at this time um, going on. And currently Trump, do a short version of it, Arno suggests. Okay. Trump is, of course, threatening trade wars a lot uh, and enacting some. The conventional wisdom with most conservative Americans, free trade is the best. Yay, free trade, free trade. And especially if you're coming out of a uh, Adam Smith's viewpoint that generally um, talks about capitalism and free trade. But there's a couple of elements that are important for free trade to be a good thing. One, it needs to be free, fair trade. If, say, um, Japan has high tariffs on beef because it's protecting its domestic beef industry, But we have low tariffs on everything coming from Japan into the U.S. And there are other high tariffs on other um, produced goods to protect various Japanese industry. But there's no tariffs on Japanese goods coming into America. That isn't free trade. That's us not having tariffs versus the Jap Japanese. It's not reciprocal trade. Nations, uh, with all of the ideology on the right and the left, often overwhelms practical abilities. Nations have national interests. And people talk about, well, American protectionism for a while protected inefficient steel industries, and they were really bad. Yeah, they did. But the U.S. needs a steel industry. The U.S. to survive long term needs a steel industry. I mean this to survive long term because if all of the steel and steel production moves out of the U.S. or substantially all of it, you know, 95 percent plus of it, and we're importing steel, then we are vulnerable long term to all kinds of situations and things. So the U.S. needs a steel industry. So tariffs, and all they say, oh, well, because we're getting ready to, and I don't, I don't know. Trump says all kinds of crap, people. Trust me, Trump says everything. Uh, I, I've got to the point I no longer pay attention to what Trump says. Trump can say it's a nice day and it's sunny. I'm going to look out and make sure that it says it. I am concerned what Trump actually does, and I actually like a lot of what Trump does. But people... I just saw on Twitter before coming on something that says Meghan Merkel is nas nasty, which is the wife of the prince, British prince. I don't know. Was he confused to Merkel of Germany? <laughs> um, Angela Merkel? Uh, you know, I don't even know, you know, if he's sure he's talking about the right person um, and not getting that confused. But um. Okay, maybe it's true. He said he, he's nasty. I don't care. Trump can say whatever he wants. I, I'm, I'm over it. And people want to jump on. Oh, Trump's so bad. We got to do something. About it. Yeah, he's just saying it's raining and it's not, or he's saying it's sunny and it's not. I don't care anymore. I care what he does. I'm saying five percent in approximately ten days from now. Five percent um, tariff on all trade coming in from Mexico. Thirty days after that, another five percent, and on and on and on to at least twenty-five percent 
um, uh, uh, tariffs on Mexico. And people are saying, well, that's just making, that's just punishing the American populace. So you're going to have to spend more on imported goods from Mexico. Well, if that's the case, yeah, the wife, yeah, that's the wife of Prince Harry. Um, but if that's the case, why is Mexico so concerned about now that he said this? Because it's going to wreck Mexican business. It may mean more costs on the American people, but it's going to wreck Mexican business. So you have to balance out free trade with maintaining national interest. And so Britain maintains, or did before, and is figuring out how to deal with it if it does ever do Brexit, which is, I think Brexit is scheduled for, what, about 20 years from now? Or is it 30 years from now that they're going to see about doing Brexit? Something like that. I'm not quite sure. Um, about protecting British farms. And Britain learned in World War II that it needs to maintain a farming industry. So tariffs aren't a tariff, trade war is generally not a good thing, but, and the people in America are constantly looking back at Smoot Hawley, Smoot Hawley, Smoot Hawley, and it caused the, you know, the American Great Depression. No, it didn't. I wish I could get to some of these people. I wish they would, you know, come, well, <laughs> IKB, are you sort of believing that? Mm -hmm. you, 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 you buying that one? Oh, 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 no, actually, you're right. End of October, but what year? In like 20 or 30 years, at the end of October in 20 or 30 years from now. Um, I think that's the schedule. So by that time, they hope everybody who will have died off that remembers a free and independent Britain and, and people will be, you know, of course, not want to do it by that point because those all the rest will die Um, well, space is already weaponized, Arno, and what we need to, we need to be able to, um, protect things like satellites and eliminate enemy satellites. I really don't think he means a force of a bunch of U.S. Marines floating around in space all the time. I don't think he means that. I think he means um, the ability to disrupt uh, satellite communication, satellite operations, satellite anything in this anything in space, to one eliminate enemy satellites, and two to be able to protect our own satellites. Yeah, and so. Because I I know that we we've shot down satellites mostly our own is you know test testing um, you know uh, missiles that can you know intercept a satellite or whatever so we've shot some of our old ones so yeah yeah and it's they were just part um, of the responsibility of the air force but. If you have its own agency, it advocates for its its own thing. Um, and so um, if you have an Air Force who's advocating, who, who needs to do normal sort of bombing and air support missions, they're going to be mostly worried about that budget. And it'll be secondary or, or trinary or way f almost forgotten about the Air Force. Yeah, we also need missiles to shoot down enemy satellites. Oh, and we also need to put up... Uh, some uh, satellites up there that have missiles that will shoot down enemy missiles as they come after our satellites, you know, you know, interception missiles, not nuclear um, stuff. So they'll just, so there'll now be a, an agency, because that's all it really is at the moment, you know, an agency that says, we need money. We need money to do this, you know, build missiles, build 
satellites, build anti-satellites, build whatever it may be, or build um, build rockets, you know, so that we can put them up there and we don't have to rely upon Russia to, to go into space or whatever it, it, it is. So it, it's as much about bureaucracy and the American system as anything else. At least that's as far as I'm understanding it. It isn't really that we're going to have a bunch of nuclear weapons floating around in space to bomb Moscow. It's more like, oh, you, you don't like what we're doing and you're shooting at us somewhere? Well, we're going to shoot down all of the Soviet satellites tomorrow. Boom, 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 boom. They're all gone. Oh, you're shooting down ours. Ha ha. We have missiles that are sitting near our satellites that will intercept your incoming missiles and stop them. You know, and that part of it, not that, you know, shutting down communications wouldn't be a bad thing, but that part of it, nobody dies. That's just we're killing killing instruments in space, you know. You know, it, that, that to me sounds like a, um, not harmless, but not the worst type of war either. So, yeah, um... So these trade things that people are going on about. Oh, Smoot Hawley. The Smoot Hawley and the Great Depression and the stuff, that all stems from World War One and the post World War One situation of Germany as well as others needing to pay back reparations and pay back loans and that whole system collapsing. That is why that trade war drove um, the world into a depression. Okay, guys, there's 40 of you. Um, we want to break out 24, so... Um, let's give them to that. I'm not a cavalry officer... Okay, we'll give them to him. Now, um, where are you? You're over here. 16, that's a bit, not too much, but a bit more we want. Let's go with, yeah, we'll do eight. You guys come over here. Um, Van Leib, Van Leib is in the west, right? Yeah. Okay, um, well, that's yeah, a perfect number for another. Okay. Oh, well, yeah, um, I'm not suggesting that we start out with a space war just because, hey, it'd be fun. You know, we like to shoot down satellites like a, you know, a video game. I'm more suggesting that if you're already in a conflict, somebody, and I did sort of say that, somebody's shooting at somebody already, um, that then you start knocking more satellites out of the sky then, yeah, that, you know, is a good thing. And I think all of you that are currently here, and maybe those watching, though probably not all of you, are younger than me. And when I grew up, I grew up with the understanding that, if not in my lifetime, sometime in the future there was going to be a massive nuclear war, and most of society was going to be destroyed. I don't know if you guys know how that feels to, to think that. That really most of society was going to be destroyed in a nuclear uh, nuclear weapon, uh, exchange. And so I no longer believe that. But that's how I grew up thinking things were going to be. Partially it was various propaganda stuff going on in the anti-nuclear stuff that our school teachers um, inappropriately pushed on us. 
I didn't know that at the time. I was, you know, in elementary school, but um, in their leftist zeal of trying to get us to all want to ban the bomb. So I no longer think there's going to be a um, massive nuclear war going on. But conversely, I actually think now nuclear weapons are more likely to be used than before. But not by a nation who has lots of nuclear weapons. I'm thinking by what we can call a rogue state, North Korea, Iran, or somebody like, well, even Pakistan dealing with and or India, but, um, but or like some of them quietly giving or allowing it to be stolen, thinking allowing to be stolen, in, as in Pakistan's case, a nuclear weapon into terrorist hands. So I actually think the likelihood of a nuclear bomb going off is more likely than before. Now, my vision for that is one of two things. Hey, thanks for following. Um, is either it's put on board an airplane, like a cargo passenger plane, somehow they get their hands on a, and we do know that there's been cargo passenger planes disappearing in Africa and not crashed, meaning that, oh, they're at the runway. Walk out the next day, eh, there's no airplane here. Where's the where's the jet cargo plane? Hmm? Anybody know where the plane went last night? Where did the plane go? Pilots walk out, there, there's no plane here. Where's my airplane? Um, and several have disappeared in Africa that have been stolen like that. And so I, I, I can't, cite just where or when right, right offhand, but there's been two or three that in the last 20 years. So it really isn't necessarily hard to come um, get your hands on a, a jet airplane, quite honestly. And so, and it could be a passenger plane, but it just somebody get their hands on an airplane. Africa has low levels of security and easy able to do that. But again, I can maybe see some rogue state sort of quietly letting something like that go. Putting on an airplane like that and then flying that airplane well, to the U.S. or to Europe or, you know, even potentially Japan or somewhere like that and have it as it comes into, you know, an airplane that looks sort of like a cargo airplane coming sort of kind of, you know, in, in flight patterns that is transmitting, you know, whatever beacons as a, you know, cargo plane coming on in that just gets in airspace and then boom blows a nuclear weapon up over a place like New York City or, as my fear, Los Angeles. I mean, not that I want it to happen to New York City, but since I don't live anywhere near it, I don't fear fear it. But I do fear that L.A. is a, is a big target zone um, and that anybody else living in a major target zone that could be. So a nuclear weapon like that being used or a nuclear weapon being put into a cargo container and sort of playing, you know, um, well, three-card Monty or, you know, take the cup and have the P under one cup and then move them around and where's the P? Well, you know, sort of switch it around from ship to ship to ship at, under shipping orders so that it's origin that it started out in Libya or something is, is sort of disguised that they think it's being sent from Rotterdam to the U.S. And all it does is get into the port and somebody triggers... Um, yeah, and see, I'm also thinking that um, whether it's a rogue state or something like that, um, they want to keep their, as much as possible, have it deniable so that they are not doing the first strike. And so, you know, that comes into a major cargo handling port and maybe never even leaves the ship. Boom blows up a nuclear weapon. So I actually think the use of a nuclear weapon, now we can also talk about dirty bombs. Those are nasty, but those aren't quite the same thing. But I think the use of a nuclear weapon is actually, the chances of them are higher, But and it can, can kill millions or tens of millions of people. So don't think I'm discounting this, but it, it in and of itself isn't quite the strike 
The other thing that I also fear, and I fear it with particularly North Korea, but somebody else, is that somebody will do a test launch and fire of a nuclear weapon that will blow up at about, right about here. Not some, well, maybe even sort of here, but the idea of this high up from 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 the world up in orbit, but that could, with the EMP blast, take out all electronics over, like, this part or another. It w not one wouldn't take out all of the U.S., but you could do it pretty high to take out the eastern seaboard or take out of much of Europe and just, boom, all electronics. All the cars stop working. Everything just stops working. And, you know, that would really, really hurt my YouTube career. That would really hurt my YouTube career. So um, I'm worried about that. And so those types of things um, I think are more likely to happen than they would have happened in the past. But... Um, It's not quite the same as massive nuclear war, but still very, very bad. Actually, the EMP thing is worse than taking out a single city. I think more people would die from an EMP than the after effects of that. Because people are going to die without YouTube, trust me. They're just all going to die. And I'm not joking. Well, I'm joking about the YouTube part. But. Um, because there would be massive starvation on the west coast of the United States if that were to happen. Okay. I guess I'm in a gloom and doom mood today. Don't really mean to be, but um, let's look back here. We talked about wanting to do aerial mines a bit earlier, so we're going to move down this path. And I don't know, Do you cons does, does anyone consider the guy Kim Jong-un? Yes, I do know who these people are. Um, does anybody consider him to be a, well, let's say a rational person? I understand he just killed a bunch of his leaders who who failed at their trade negotiations with Trump or something like that. Um, okay. The fate of Czechoslovakia. Set up Slovakia as a puppet state. Um, all of Czechoslovakia. Okay, um, political power. Gains base war support. Um, no, we're going to set up Slovakia. We're going to go that route. Question of Yugoslavia. Put the squeeze on him. Yeah. Okay, we'll do that. And, okay, we're going to do the 35 days Blitzkrieg tactics. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Prusano. Um, it would be a... Oh, devastating thing. Um, here in LA, um, I sort of hap hope it happens at night because that way the freeways will be empty. Because if it happens in the daytime, the freeways would be full of cars that couldn't move because they would all have um, uh, electronic systems that were basically destroyed. And so they would not then be able to, uh, you know, you wouldn't be able to get around to get in fresh trucks. Because just figure all of the roads are all blocked with trucks that can't be moved. So even bringing in trucks from the other parts of the United States would be incredibly difficult. 
to get things like food here and we have just a few short days I mean, obviously all the people in hospitals and whatnot would or many of them would immediately die because they no longer have electronic um, you know breathing things and whatnot well see I I get your point about protecting himself but I think killing off the people that so so that failed in um, the negotiations with Trump, and I don't know what, what he thinks that they failed in. Um, if anything, I would say, think makes other people more irrationally afraid of him within his own government. And I don't think that those people were... Okay. Kingdom of Hungary declared war on Carpathia, Ukraine. Now... Oh, this part here historically goes um, to uh, Hungary. I don't know if it will with this mod in this current state here. There was a brief, don't know if war is the right term, but there was a brief conflict between Czechoslovakia and Hungary in which shooting and a uh, handful, less than 10, I think people actually died um, going on that does sort of something mean like this. So I don't know that that isn't entirely, yes, it has collapsed. So if we're talking about simply an occupation that some shooting went on, that is almost historically correct. Not quite, but we're, we're getting to that. Oh, you, here. I, oh man, I'd really like to fin or finish my mod Third Reich events for Hearts of Iron 4. Um, there's just some other considerations with Paradox, and I maybe should poke them again. It's maybe getting time to do so. Hey, Ari. Oh, well, yes. Um, IKBC. One of the reasons I wanted to have it happen um, uh, at night is to have the, the freeways open, and then my dad can come and pick me up. Um, because he'd be driving a, a 1934 Ford, um, drive it in from Arizona, and that would run just fine. Um, I don't think he would drive the Model T. That would probably just be too slow. Might almost be able to walk faster. Um, not quite walk faster, but yeah. Um, yeah, um, there are definitely cars that are not um, drastically affected by EMPs. And I really would love to know just what gets burnt out in a car so electronics because if i if i had more money and i i wish i was one of these rich youtubers i'm a actual youtuber which means i'm a very poor youtuber um i wonder just how much of the electronics and how difficult it is to replace because then i would put all of the if it wasn't too difficult to do i would buy the extra bits and pieces fuse so i'm wondering if there are fuses and what are the other electric components that would need to be replaced. And then I would keep them in a little Faraday cage of some sort to simply replace and then run the vehicle. Yeah, I could be, but um, it really comes down to what, what Paradox is willing to do with it. Yeah, and I do know I do know that some of the the military stuff, and there are various hardening um, procedures that can be done to to deal with some of that. And to the best of my understanding, the um, uh, 
the U.S. based um, uh, electrical system is not hardened at, at all, to, to the best of my understanding. For that, um, I think some of Europe is, um, but I am not sure, quite honestly. Okay. Um, Okay, that's big enough for let's um, select all I'd like to attack from here oh let's okay um armor one infantry lots of lots of armor okay let's do another one and how good are these units we now have some army experience and probably should have trained for more Okay, that's reasonably good. It's not great, maybe, but reasonably good. Um, yeah, we'll give them to Rommel. Okay, well, we have enough tanks. We have plenty of tanks. We have... Plenty of car, armored cars. We have lots of infantry equipment. So what we need to do here is, this is why I love this system. Um, I still quite, and I'm still going to get back to the um, Hearts of Iron 3 game that I've just, because of other things, haven't kept up with. Um... I still like, um, still currently like Black Ice Hearts of Iron 3 better than this, but this is still so much more potential because I have a store of equipment here that I can then, okay, I don't really want to build any of those. What I want to build is medium, start building medium tanks, but, um, Okay, we have towed anti-aircraft, we have towed anti-tank. Okay, it's not so much. Let's see. We got all the check. Factories. How are we doing for artillery? Um, 3,000, okay. Well, let's do some rational... We were to add another artillery. Okay. Oh, they want a little more than we need, so we do need more artillery. Um, well, we can hold off on it for a little while. I'd rather not really do. Oh, um, they all have anti-tank support. Good. Uh, these guys... Yeah, I think signal companies are good for our mobile forces. So we're going to add those to... Keep the initiative up. So let's do another five artillery there. I'm going to start a second. Light Panzer line that I'm going to convert to a medium Panzer once we get that going. No, IKB, it's more of an economic thing, which I don't want to put out here. I would be a little more willing to talk to you a little bit more privately on it, but um, because um, Paradox is fully aware of what's in Third Reich events. 
Trust me about that. And I'm talking about Paradox Interactive and not just some some dude in the development studio who's looked at it once. I'm talking about, um, uh, you know, people at Paradox Interactive. They They fully know what's in it. And that's not really... So far, yeah, I'm still liking um, Road to 56. I was talking about some minor problems, but I'm still still liking it um, on the whole. Okay, that's using up that. I wonder why Czechoslovak, you didn't give me any more. Oh, yeah, they don't have any code signed, of course. No more. Um, I knew it as I was saying it. Um, not what, um, naval factories. Okay, we need more tungsten. Okay. Yes, I did know from just... Swedish steel is sort of is is equal Swedish steel that we're talking about here um, was basically equal to a um, tungst tungsten steel alloy. So that's why Sweden has tungsten, even though they really didn't have so much. Okay, see ya, Tippett. Thanks for being here. Yeah, build some paratroopers. Um, you're right about that. Um, and I'm not. Uh, let's add some. Uh, well, let's first see what they look like. Okay, those guys suck. Um, that will help. Um, these are all paradroppable. Um, okay, okay, well, we have no divisions like that, but, um, well, that's a little better. Thank you for reminding me, because I actually forgot. I am building some transports for both air supply and, um... What do these look like? I don't know quite what they mean to these to be. Signal company? Signal company, at least my understanding, affects the... No. battle initiative a bit more. I don't know if that's... Cover rate is actually supply use up. Supply and org... I don't know why organization is down for it. Um, production cost... You see, it uses more supply, so I'm not going to use that. Because we we want to uh, we want to keep supply use down for it. I think that's going to be my answer for that. In real life, of course, but um, in this sort of mechanics, not so much. Okay, well, we're starting to get ready for offensive operations here. You can move to there. You can come down to here. Obviously, we are getting ready for a war with Poland and a war with the Low Countries. And we're radically increasing our... Okay, well... We're going to end the episode now. I want to thank everyone for watching. Thanks for liking the videos. If you haven't already, please give it a thumbs up. And, of course, I love hearing from you. Uh, so please post questions, comments, suggestions on any of the topics covered, or if you have any other questions or tips on the road to 56. I'd love to hear them. See you next time for more Hearts of Iron.